Previously on Ark Knight's Lore series, Maria, the younger sister of Operator Nurl, wants to restore her family's honor by partaking in the Casimir's Major, a massive knight tournament. While not being a trained knight, she still managed to win every single competition she had to participate in, be it because of her stubbornness or because of her sheer luck. She has attracted a lot of attention from fans of the tournament, but also from the companies running it. The elites of Kazimierz don't really like the idea of having the sister of someone they exiled be that popular. And because of that, Maria Nurl soon found herself in a very dangerous position. And that's the point where we will continue. By the way, watching or re-watching the first part might help with understanding what's happening here a bit more. Now, let's get started. After the arguments she had with her basically own Sophia and her actual uncle Muina, Maria spends quite some time together with her veteran friends at Bald Marcin's bar. She is having a very hard time with the whole situation. She feels misunderstood by everyone, while the old knight Vomit Vogelweide explains to her uh, that Sophia is just worried about her because she knows uh, that the competition isn't fair. While the senior citizen homies try to make her feel better, another man enters the bar. Bold Marcin wants to greet him until he recognizes the man's face. It's spokesman Charny from the General Chamber of Commerce. Both Marcin and the veterans don't want to see that knob hat, the latter two even pull their weapons on him. But he doesn't seem to care, apparently he came here just in order to tell Maria who her next opponent will be. Marcin calls him out on his bullshit, but Charny stays calm. While telling Maria about the next opponent, he doesn't miss out on the opportunity to flex on her with his business contacts. Obviously in order to tell her that if she forfeited now, she would get a good sponsor and restore her family's honor without causing any more trouble. Not that far away from the bar, the Arschloch Knight and the Flametail Knight are still trying to escape Platinum's attack on them. Sometime after Charnley left, the two barge into the bar, almost collapsing. Very quickly, everyone starts helping them. After they find out that the two are infected while treating their wounds, the veterans agree that they have to protect them. The next day, Sophia comes to the bar. She thought Maria would be here, but Bold Marcin tells her that something happened on the last evening and he sent her home. She sees blood on the floor and is about to act up because she thinks that something happened to Maria, but the Bold Bro calms her down by telling her what really happened. And he also tells her what Maria is doing right now, competing in the arena. Her foe is Titus Topola, who gets called the left hand. The battle between the two starts in 3, 2, 1, and Topola has already sent her sword flying and follows it up by kicking her to the ground. After she left the bar earlier, Sophia went home. After arriving, a servant of hers brought her her sword. After it had been broken for a while, Maria has repaired it for her. Holding the sword that her somewhat niece fixed for her, she gets a bit emotional and thinks back to the time she spent with Maria and Margaret back in the day. More or less, she changes her mind about the whole competition thing and makes her way to the arena in which Maria is performing, although that's probably not the most accurate way of putting it. Sophia arrives to the most one-sided fight the Major has seen in a while. Tobala is toying with her by beating her down, letting her get up and repeating the process. At the same time he insults her, while he also tells her that he feels bad for her, because to him she is not a knight, but just a random girl he is beating up. Kind of a dickhead, not gonna lie. Sophia of course shouts at her, telling her to just give up, but Maria doesn't hear. She just tries to keep her eyes open, because if she closes them now, they will be shut forever. But she can't help it, and closes them. Then she hears a voice speaking to her. It's the voice of Grandfather Nurl, who brought her and her sister up. His voice makes her remember the Nurl family motto. To be a knight is to be the noble light that illuminates the land. Spokesman Charny outside the arena gets a call by his superiors. They want Tobala to end the battle as soon as possible, worried that a longer battle will give Maria more opportunities to be as lucky as in her previous battles. Slowly, Maria regains her strength and gets up. Most likely because he wants to mock her again, Tobala asks her what she is fighting for. For her family, their honor, but she answers, for myself. 
and with one single strike, using her arts, she casts an array of light, manages to get past the defenses of the by now very tired knight, and knocks him clean out. And after raising her sword while the entire arena cheers for her, Maria gets proclaimed to be the winner. Bold Marcin is visiting Mwina. He still is hoping to convince him to help Maria, but he does not even think about changing his mind. Especially not now that he knows that the spokesman is directly involved. After being the unpleasant dick he always is, he dismisses Marcin, saying that he has to take care of more office work. Back at Sophia's place, the entire crew has gathered. The veterans were helping the two squirrel knights until recently and explain how they were a part of a bunch of infected who got rounded up and thrown into an arena to entertain the masses and have been on the run together with a group of more infected. But there are more important matters to discuss now. The next battle will be a team battle and it's a 2 vs 2. Sophia says that that's weird, most of the time team battles are usually fought 3 vs 3 or even 4 vs 4. But it will be alright according to her, since she already found a partner for Maria, Justina, the far tooth knight. Sophia also attends to Maria's wounds and makes her cream. On the other side of town, spokesman Czarny is once again having platinum with him. He has a new target for her, Mwina Nurl. But this time she is not supposed to take the target out, only to command a few of her subordinates to watch over him. Platinum has a bunch of subordinates with her by the way. It doesn't take a lot of time and the day of the duel battle arrived. The veterans were at the bar getting ready to watch the battle over TV when a newspaper boy came in. Marcin reads the front page and it hits him like a prick. The far tooth knight got assaulted last night and she has been missing ever since. Leaving everything aside, he rushes to the arena. The other two follow, although they are not nearly as fast. While Maria is getting ready, Sophia notices that Justina still hasn't arrived, but is not worried as apparently she never has been the most punctual knight of Kazimierz. An arena worker comes to the place where they are waiting and calls out Maria's name, Maria. She finishes her final preparations and enters the arena. Literally a few moments later Marcin arrives, asking Sophia where Maria is. He explains that Fartuf got eliminated and Maria is in great danger. They quickly try getting into the arena, but after getting on the viewer platform, Marcin stops Sofia from jumping into the battlegrounds. He asks her whether she wants to die together with Maria and the definitely on says that she would rather die with Maria than let her die on her own. Outside the arena, the old knight and the fairy blacksmith finally arrive as well and get greeted by Platinum, who has her bow ready. She is tasked with preventing Mwina from entering the arena and does not want to fight the two. She attempts to persuade them with the brave and courageous words, could you, like, leave? But they, like, don't leave. They fight. Inside the arena, Maria's two opponents got announced, but the crowd is not cheering. First, an ominous aura, the smell of a graveyard, and a cloud of originium dust enter. What follows is the heavy thudding of footsteps. Her foes are the wizard knight and the corrupted knight. Two Sarkas twins and everyone present wonders whether beings like them could be considered knights at all. After the two talk to each other about how they would kill their target and make it seem like an accident, they attack. While Maria is confident and understands their movement patterns easily, the strike of one of them sends her flying. Maria cuffs heavily and starts vomiting blood. They are using arts on her. Marcin has to do his absolute best to keep Sofia from jumping in. This is the end of Maria's life. That she has lived until now. A burst of light suddenly strikes the arena. For many seconds, the entire place is extremely bright and everyone is blinded by the light. It takes a moment until Maria realizes what just happened. Foul arts and tortured circus infected. Is this what a knight should be? She hears a familiar but slightly more mature sounding voice say. First Maria thinks that she is hallucinating, but it really happens. Margaret Nurl, her older sister, who she hasn't seen in six years, has come to her rescue. But their sisterly reunion has to wait, because two big boys are kind of still after them. But Maria won't just let her sister be the one to do all the work. They proceed to form the perfect tag team, 
Maria with her shield and Margaret with her staff. Sophia and Martin can't believe what's happening. Same goes for Platinum and her subordinates. After Margaret's sudden arrival, she gets the order to retreat. The two veterans barge into the arena and while Platinum gets ready to leave, two Sarkas women walk past her. Maria is patiently waiting for her sister to attack and looks at her. She makes a painful expression, it's almost as if she is pitying the two enemies. As they get ready to launch another attack, Margaret says one word, repent. Within a second, the two Sarkas are kneeling on the ground. The sisters have won. While they turn to each other, the official Aunt Sophia finally gets into the arena and slaps Margaret across the face while saying how happy she is that she's returned. With the help of the veterans, Sophia leads everyone out of the arena before the entire place gets filled with journalists and officials. After all, Margaret is still a persona non grata. Having left the arena, the group splits up so that they won't stick out too much. Maria and Margaret manage to get to the Nerl family's house without too much trouble. There, they finally can have their sisterly reunion. There are a few artworks of that. While looking at the room that used to belong to Margaret when she still lived here, Uncle Mwina returned from work. To say that he was not happy about Margaret being here is a massive understatement. He draws his blade and tells her to do the same, claiming that it's better to fall to his blade than to the shadows of the armorless union, he engages her into a duel. We don't know how that ended, but near the arena a very disturbed spokesman gets ready to leave. Platinum is the one to bring him a message from the General Chamber of Commerce, but he knows exactly what's gonna happen to him, hence why he right now is getting ready for the exile he is gonna be sent into. Before actually leaving, he gives Platinum one last order. To eliminate the son of Shevchik, the plastic knight, as he was a witness to what happened to his father. The details of what exactly happened after that are a tad blurry, the only thing still worth mentioning is that another knight of the armorless union gets ready to be dispatched to an organization called Rhodes Island. And that's exactly where a bunch of this story's characters end up, if you managed to pull them, that is. Well, this video took a while to come out. I will probably explain in one of the next videos why I didn't make the second part right away, but hey, at least it's out now. Thank you for watching and big shout out to my channel supporters and operators, as well as our first channel commander, Vritten. Consider subscribing to the channel if you enjoyed the video, or maybe even join the membership if you want to support me and get access to a few nice features like emotes and early access. And I hope I will see you next time. Cheers!